Guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English, and today we are talking about mock exams and the bigger picture for your year. Everything Education Tuition for Maths, English, and Science. Exams should be taken for what they are PPEs, whatever you want to call them. They should be taken for what they are. Now, what are the pur what is the purpose of these exams? Is to assess where you currently are in your academic journey. Are you close to your target grade? Are you far away? What is happening? What support do you need? Now, that being said, in this video, guys, I want to talk about mock exams, but almost the bigger picture. For me, guys, mock exams, PPEs are important, but my first message to you guys is don't waste this opportunity. Why? Your exams, your mock exams, it should be your opportunity to give you a massive kick up the backside and get you learning, get you working. Let me explain what I mean by that. I teach students, right? And I'll ask them in September, how's revision going? And they'll say to me, oh, sir, it's going well. I'm just making my notes. Good, well done. Then I ask them in December, how's revision going? Sir, it's going well, it's going well. I'm just making my notes. Okay three months to make your notes then i asked him in february how's revision going so it's going really well it's really well i'm making my notes what are you writing are you writing an encyclopedia why are you making your notes constantly and this is the story of so many year 11s whenever you speak to them guys i promise this might even be you whenever you speak to them about how's revision going yeah i'm making my notes guys what are you doing here You've bought the lovely paper. You've bought the pastel colored highlighters. You know what, this is, this is what annoys me about a lot of pages on social media. A lot of these social media revision pages, all they worry about is looking pretty, but their content is rubbish. Like focus on the work, not on the makeup. Stop trying to make everything look pretty. Like don't be sitting there guys, come on for a whole month doing lovely writing for revision and making it all look beautiful with nice little arrows, but you've done no work. What's that gonna get you, a grade one? I say that because, my students, I beg you, use your mock exams as the chance, as the kick up the backside to get your revision notes done and dusted. You've got mock exam maybe at the end of October, maybe in November, maybe even December. Whether you got your mocks on Macbeth, Jekyll, English language, even math, science, history, wherever your mocks are on, use the next couple of weeks. And I say couple of weeks because that's all you need. You're not writing a revision guide. You're making notes to get your notes done. So for example, my rule is very clear. If you're doing Macbeth, for example, or Romeo and Juliet, Jekyll and Hyde, all you need is four pages of notes. Four. Not, actually, no, I, I take that back. Four sides, not even four pages. On the first side, you're going to put all the key events of the play or the book. Just in case you forget what happens, put all the key events. So, I don't know, Romeo and Juliet, Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. That's on one page. Done. On the next page, you're going to write down the 10 quotes you're gonna learn for your exam. Just 10, not 30, not 40, not 50. If anyone tells you that, they're just taking you for a ride. Because if you're gonna learn 40, 50 quotes per text, plus the poetry, call blind me, my friend, you're learning about 200 quotes. Nobody has time for that. We are not doing hifs of Macbeth or Romeo and Juliet, if you know what I mean. So guys, 10 quotes is more than enough. The trick is learn 10 quotes that can be applied to lots of different questions and learn 10 quotes that have language structure and form inside them. Just go and watch my other videos where I give you these 10 quotes, learn them. So page one is your key events. Sorry, side one. Side two is your key quotes. Next, side three is your key characters. Key characters. Don't start telling me about random characters who make an appearance for one line. Key characters on the next page. So Macbeth, who he, did, who he is and what he did. Lady Macbeth, who he is and what he did. 
And then on the last page is your context. Patriarchy, Freud, great chain of being, capitalism, socialism, whatever you're learning for that particular book. And that's it. What other notes do you need? What other notes do you need? Four sides is all you need. Once you've made your notes for your books and your poems and whatever you're doing, then what do you do with it? Then you go and do past papers. Research has proven. Guys, I made a whole video about this. Research, facts, not opinion, has proven that the most effective way of learning isn't note taking, isn't highlighting, isn't rereading, but it's practice. It's actual practice of whatever you're gonna be doing. So once you've made your notes over the next couple of weeks, start doing past paper practice. Do Romeo and Juliet questions, do Jekyll and Hyde questions, do Inspector Calls questions, do English language questions. Those questions will show you what you're good at and what you're weak at. So for example, let's say you're doing, I don't know, Inspector Calls. And every time you do a question on Mr. Burling, you're doing well. I don't know why I did that kiss, but forget it. <laughs> Guys, every time you do a question on, his, on Mr. Burling, you do well. But you might realize that, hold on, I struggle when it comes to the inspector. Okay, perfect. Now you know, let me go back. Let me go re do a bit more work around inspector. Do a bit more revision, then go back and do past papers. Your past papers will show you what you're weak at and what you're strong at. But it's that practice that is so essential. So, first things first, guys. Use this time to get your notes done. Then do past papers. Now, I should have said this, guys, in the beginning. But sometimes, depending upon the school you go to and, and depending upon the cards you've been dealt with, you may not have yet even read all of your content. Meaning, you might still have poems left you might still have questions left. Sorry, 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 like uh, questions to cover in English language. Or you, maybe you haven't even read Romeo and Juliet. If that's the case, get that done first. I'll give you an example, guys. I, let, I get a lot of parents who contact me, right? And they'll say to me, oh, my child had an exam and they failed in science or they failed in English. And a lot of parents assume it's because the child is struggling in that subject. But normally, after a few questions, what I learn is they're not struggling. They've just not been taught that content. Of course they're going to fail. If you've not been taught English language paper one, question four, and you've got a mock exam, and that question is coming up in the exam, good luck to you. Because you're going to probably struggle at it. Because you've not been taught the question. So, please make sure you've read your content, covered your material, and don't wait for your school. If your school is lagging, if your school is buffering, Get to work, guys, because at the end of the day, it's your exam. So start. So first things first, guys, I should have said at the very beginning, read your content, cover your content, then make your notes, then pass paper practice. But guys, the essential purpose I'm trying to say right now is use these PPEs, use these mock exams to get that started. Don't do that in January. Don't do that in March. Do it now. So over the next three to four weeks, your reading is done. Your notes are done, finished. So I don't know, if you've got a shelf in your house, you've got all your English notes, all your maths, all your science. And yes, you may add to it. There may be content that you haven't covered that you might add to it, but the bulk is done. And your mock exams are the excuse to get it done. Once that's done, practice past papers. The past papers will show you what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and then that will direct your revision. And you repeat, and you repeat, and you repeat. And remember guys, Remember, 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 research has proven that that practice is the most effective way to revise. It's not note-taking, it's not highlighting, it's not rereading. I'll put that video in the comments, go watch it, because that will teach you how to work as a student. And then guys, my last, last, last piece of advice to all of you guys. A lot of you will maybe not get the grade you want in your mock exams, not because you're not intelligent, but because your mindset isn't correct. So many students struggle in exams because they don't know how to do exams. They get nervous, they get anxious, they can't write the way they normally write. 
they can't perform the way they normally perform and they struggle they really do guys i've seen i've seen intelligent kids while i used to work in schools and i would walk around the hall doing this during the exam and it's not because they're sleepy trust me it's not they've given up that moment got too much when a kid asks you to go to the toilet during an exam guys for me that kid is getting an excuse ready oh sir i could have done well but i needed the toilet you know it took me half an hour guys trust me get your mind right get the mind where it should be now what do i mean when i say that my first bit of advice guys is now start doing that practice so you learn to work under pressure embrace it get used to it so get used to working under pressure the first couple of times it's going to be uncomfortable but the more you do it the easier it's going to get trust me guys it happens with everything in life with everything guys the more you do it the easier it will get but start doing it number 2 guys this is important learn to own your exam don't blame somebody else oh sir i ran out of time what should i do about it you ran out of time not me why did you run out of time could you not see the clock ticking could you not understand that after this time i got to move on to the next question and now i got to move on to the next question you made the wrong decision i know i sound harsh but ultimately guys this is important if you've been told that for english language paper 1 question 2 8 marks spend 10 minutes why did you spend 25 minutes on a goddamn 8 mark question why did you do that that's your mistake or some kids in the exam guys they'll write a whole paragraph then they'll cross the paragraph out what are you doing you can't do that in an exam leave it there leave it there it might get you one or two marks but don't cross out a whole paragraph and number 2 if the paragraph is absolute nonsense why did it take you the entire paragraph to realize that what you're writing is wrong you should realize that pretty early on not at the end of the paragraph because guys that's time in an exam that's 5 10 minutes of an exam that is only 1 hour 45 i say all these things guys because so many students make it out as though if they do bad in an exam it's the teacher's fault uh uh-uh. uh it's a coach it's like being a coach when a coach trains a fighter to go on fight once that fighter enters the ring good luck to you i've done my bit the sessions the training telling you what to do telling you what to eat that's done go do your thing now go perform guys own your exam learn to do exams learn to get in the right mindset because all these things will impact you as a student and to be honest with you guys they even impact you like out in life you know i used to find it so difficult doing things in public like i would get really nervous and i hated that about myself for a long time i would when i'm on my own i would perform really well but in public i would be like you know you can do this you've done it a thousand times but people watching would would really affect me and i made a conscious effort to change that to really get in the mindset because guys what i found do you, do you want to hear stories anyway guys what i found was every time i would do stuff in public i would put on headphones to block out the noise but i realized that's not helping me because i'm hiding from what's annoying me so i removed the headphones and i learned to do things out in front of people my point being guys is this learn your weaknesses and don't hide away from them because they will affect you exams yes but even in life trust me guys these things exams is just one thing you're going to do there's many things in life where these things are going to creep up and they're going to impact you anyway guys i think i've talked too much and i don't want to bore you guys any more just my advice guys mock exams are important ppes are important but your gcses are a lot more important so use this as the catalyst use this as the kick up the backside to get yourself in the right mindset get yourself working so you're ready and on the right trajectory for the ultimate exams coming up in about 8 months time all right guys it's been mr everything english peace